I had such a great time at Ironman Louisville in 2007, I just had to do another, so I signed up for Ironman Coeur d'Alene, Idaho in 2010. Organization is key when preparing for an Ironman. This is all the stuff I had to pack just for the race itself. Well, this Ironman adventure didn't exactly start off on the right foot. I wound up with food poisoning just two days before the race. I was so miserable, I had to lie down on the floor of the Denver airport, and I flew with a puke bag in my lap. But I eventually made it to Spokane, and then we drove to Coeur d'Alene. My family and I stayed at the Coeur d'Alene Resort. What a beautiful place. After spending all day Friday sick in bed and eating nothing, I finally emerged on Saturday. My girls actually had to hold me up because I felt so weak when we walked around the expo. Okay, time to get organized again. I had to number all my transition and special needs bags for Sunday. At Ironman Coeur d'Alene, all the transition bags are laid out in rows according to your race number. I did a last minute check just to make sure I had everything and then I had to leave my bags there overnight. Next, I headed to the Tri-Bike Transport Tent to pick up my bike. They brought it from Cincinnati on a truck without even taking it apart. All I had to do was put the pedals back on. The spring on the aero bar pad was broken, but my husband slash crew chief MacGyvered it with a bungee cord and I was good to go. I just taped a few packets of goo under my aero bars and took my beautiful blue guru on a test ride just to make sure everything was working. Then my family walked over to the transition area with me and I said goodbye to my bike that I fondly call the Rocket. See you tomorrow. While I rested and sipped Gatorade all afternoon Saturday, my support crew hit the town of Coeur d'Alene. And since I have three teenage girls, guess what they wanted to do? Duh, go shopping, of course. Meanwhile, my crew chief made sure he stayed hydrated and loose. And speaking of getting loose, I spent some time stretching. Tomorrow was bound to be a long, hot day, and I wanted to make sure that I was limber and relaxed. Then, while I took a nap, my crew chief continued to hydrate. Later that evening, we hit the town for some dinner. My support crew had to try the potato skins made from real Idaho potatoes. Wow, was I lucky to have such a wonderful, supportive crew with me. Now it was race day morning. I surveyed the calm, chilly water of Coeur d'Alene Lake. I hadn't eaten much the last two days, but I knew I had to have something for breakfast. So I had a banana and a Diet Pepsi, breakfast of champions. I turned in my special needs bags filled with cliff shot blocks, pretzels, and arm warmers for the run. My crew chief gave me a pre-race pep talk. His advice, make sure to eat and drink plenty all day. Now it was time to get my body marked with my race number, 2650, and my age. USAT rules say you must race at the age you'll be at the end of that year. The nice body marking lady apologized that she had to mark me as 50, but I didn't mind it at all. I'm proud to be fit enough to do an Ironman at my age. Now it was time to get into my wetsuit. The water was only 60 degrees, so I needed a full body wetsuit. I put some body glide on my ankles and legs and finally managed to pull that thing on. Now I felt strong and ready to go. This was the scene as all the competitors gathered on the beach. 2,200 people, 70% men, 30% women. I positioned myself toward the front since I'm a strong swimmer. And then the cannon went off and it was mass chaos. It was a free for all in the water, people kicking and punching. And since I was wearing a neoprene cap with a chin strap, I felt like I was choking. It was like a human washing machine in that water people tumbling around everywhere. At one point, someone swam on top of me and pushed me under. As I struggled to get free, I kicked a guy in the head, hard. A sharp pain shot up my leg. Uh-oh, I think I broke my toe. This is what it looked like later that night. Yep, definitely broken. But no time to worry about that now. I finally emerged from the 2.4 mile swim in one hour, 22 minutes. Slower than I'd hoped, but not terrible considering the craziness in the water. My hands and feet were completely numb. I was ready to get on my bike and warm up. Some nice volunteers stripped my wetsuit and I headed to transition and grabbed my bag. I saw my crew and I told them I was cold but doing great. I took off on my 112 mile bike ride. 
It was a warm day, 80 degrees and sunny skies, but no complaints. I was wearing a helmet that I had all my friends and family sign. They wrote messages of love and encouragement, like, hang tough, that was from my dad. Thinking about all the wonderful people in my life really helped me get through that difficult ride. My toe really hurt when I pressed on the pedal, and my stomach was a little bit uneasy. I actually threw up twice and got kind of lightheaded. Luckily, we passed some beautiful sights on the bike course, which took us up to Hayden Lake and along Coeur d'Alene Lake. So I just tried to concentrate on the great views and stay positive. The bike leg took 7 hours 51 minutes. I finally started the run portion, which I actually walked, and other than this serious toe pain, I really felt pretty good. My stomach had settled down, and I was determined to finish the 26.2 mile marathon. I felt strong and happy, and I promised my family I would finish before that 17 hour cutoff at midnight. Speaking of family, they went to a Mexican restaurant for dinner while I was walking. They also spent some time at the finish line watching the winners, Andy Potts and Lindsey Corbin, and all the other great athletes. I got to see my gang in town once more after my first loop, and I told them that every step was painful, but by walking on the inside of my foot and going down hills backwards, I knew I could do it. I assured them once again that I would be back before midnight and the 17-hour deadline. I toughed it out and did the marathon in 7 hours and 12 minutes, arriving at the finish line with only 19 minutes to spare. I crossed the line, crying, laughing, screaming, exhilarated, exhausted, and thrilled. 16 hours and 41 minutes, and I am now a two-time Ironman finisher. My incredible support crew was right there waiting for me. I couldn't have done it without them. They all sacrificed and suffered during my training, so I share this victory with them. We all celebrated, and I enjoyed an ice-cold beverage. By the way, the pain from my broken toe lasted for a few months, but the pride from finishing another Ironman triathlon will last forever.